Greetings and salutations, fellow pilots. This is Akirishin. In this video, I will be featuring the premium American heavy fighter Grumman XP-50. This aircraft is equipped with two 12.7 millimeter machine guns, which do low damage per second of 45, but have a very high rate of fire, as most machine guns tend to, of 750 rounds per minute. It has a medium effective firing range of, of 520 meters. It is also equipped with two 20 millimeter cannons that do 90 damage per second, have a medium rate of fire of 400 round per minute, and a long effective firing range of 700 meters. The XP-50 can also equip two 100 pound bombs that do 1500 damage within a 50 meter radius. I have to say that having flown this aircraft quite a bit, that the bombs are very underwhelming. They don't seem to have any deleterious effect on the aircraft's performance, so there's no reason not to equip them. But just don't be ex expecting these bombs to accomplish too much in terms of ground attack. This aircraft is said to have high airspeed, which it does, and a long-lasting boost. To accentuate that strength, I have chosen to equip the upgrade of Engine Tuning 2, which increases the aircraft's engine power by 5%. What does that do? Well, that helps this aircraft to accelerate better and to maintain its speed when conducting turns and when climbing. I have also equipped Improved Aircraft Polish 3, which increases the aircraft's maximum speed by 5% and also increases its acceleration in a dive by 25%. Again, we're trying to uh, augment the aircraft's strength of having a high airspeed. The aircraft is said to have lo low effectiveness in maneuvering combat, and having flown it, I can definitely say that that is accurate. It is not what I would call a very nimble fighter. No, of course most heavy fighters are not, so that's to be expected. Uh, but to try to uh, ameliorate to some degree that problem, I did choose to equip Improved Flaps 2, which does two things. It increases the efficiency of airspeed reduction with an idle engine by 20%. And more importantly, for our purposes, uh, it increases maneuverability in turns by 3%. So it, it helps a little bit there. In terms of pilot skills, I have chosen to go with Engine Guru 1. I don't have a lot of points on this particular captain. Uh, if I had more skill points, I would go with Engine Guru 1 and Engine Guru 2, which collectively increase engine thrust and top speed by 5%. Further, I would select Aerodynamics Expert because it increases the effects of our engine tuning uh, and our aircraft polish as well as improved flaps. So all three of our upgrades are accentuated by Aerodynamics Expert. So those are kind of the three skills that I would go with initially if I had the skill points, but I don't. <laughs> so I've just gone for now with Engine Guru 1. Again, we're trying to accentuate the aircraft's strength of being kind of a, you know, zoom and boom type aircraft. Ammunition wise, I have gone with the universal ammunition which has a high chance of fire 
and a medium chance of critical damage. As far as consumables, I have gone with Control Surface Auto Trim, which automatically restores controllability of wings and tail. I have chosen to go with Control Surface Auto Trim because this aircraft is indicated to have large dimensions, so it's a big target up there in the sky, has a big old bullseye on it. Uh, therefore, the wings uh, and such are more vulnerable to critical damage, and we want to make sure that we don't lose control of our aircraft. The aircraft also has vulnerable engines, and so I have chosen to go with automatic engine restarter. This aircraft strength is its airspeed, so staying on the move, being able to, uh, you know, from a defensive standpoint, get out of dodge when necessary uh, to flee the scene. Uh, we want to make sure that we've got control of our aircraft and that our engines are, are working. So that's kind of the strategy behind those choices. As a, the third consumable, I've gone with uh, an absolute must for this type of aircraft, which is engine cooling. And once activated, it reduces engine overheating by 70%. Uh, so this long uh, engine boost, once it has expired, you activate engine cooling and you've got 70% of your boost back, basically. Uh, and that's that's like fantastic. So it's definitely a must. Uh, the control surface auto trim and automatic engine restarter uh, are gold consumables and therefore they activate automatically. You don't have to think about them. When you need them, they activate. Also, they have 60 second cooldowns. The non-gold version of those consumables has a 90 second uh, cooldown and you activate them uh, manually. Mainly I use the gold just because of the automatic uh, activation of those. I like to concentrate more on flying my aircraft and maintaining situational awareness uh, and getting rounds on the target rather than you know button pushing. Uh, and the engine cooling, of course, you activate that manually. You would want that to activate automatically anyway because it's very situational. You don't want to waste it uh, if you don't need to get your boost back up. In terms of the aircraft specifications, get these all expanded for you here. Its optimum altitude is 2,000 meters. It has a rate of climb of 62 meters per second. And you see here its greatest weakness, average time to turn 360 degrees, 13 seconds. So, you know, um, break out your picnic <laughs> when you're trying to turn because it's going to take a while. Don't get in any turning dogfights. You really want to avoid those. Uh, you know, stick to uh, zooming and booming, so to speak. Top speed at best altitude is 670 kilometers per hour. Uh, the optimum airspeed is 490 kilometers per hour. Stall speed uh, is 160 kilometers per hour. So it is an aircraft that can, you know, that you can stall out fairly easily on the climb, so just be cognizant of that. In terms of paint schemes, you are currently looking at the winter paint scheme, uh, which looks really nice uh, in snowy on snowy maps. Uh, this is summer, desert, and finally, marine. But winter's kind of my favorite there, so we'll keep that for now. Okay, so what we are going to do now is to head over to World of Warplanes 
website, use their compare aircraft tool uh, so that we can compare this tier 6 heavy fighter to uh, its other heavy fighter peers. So let's do that now. All right, so we are here on World of Warplanes website using their compare aircraft tool. And I uh, just remind you that uh, if you uh, do this yourself, just make sure that you go into each one of the aircraft and fully uh, customize them so that you're looking at each fighter at its best. And uh, first up, we have the we have a couple of Mosquito aircraft. We have a premium De Havilland 98 Mosquito FB26, and we have the uh, Tech Tree from the Tech Tree De Havilland 98 Mosquito. Uh, so let's take a look at these aircraft here. First of all, in terms of gun armaments. So our machine guns, our cannons, both mosquitoes are indicated to be uh, superior to the armaments of the XP-50. So let's take a look and see why that may be. So first looking at the premium aircraft, uh, it has uh, four 20 millimeter Hispano cannons that do 90 damage per second. The cannons on the XP-50, the XP-50 has two machine guns and two cannons. Just looking at the cannons on the XP-50, they're basically the same. They also do 90 uh, damage per second, 400 rate of fire, and 700 meter firing range. So uh, that's pretty much this, the same as are on the Mosquito. Uh, but the Mosquito has four of them, whereas the XP-50 only has two of them. We'll say that the, the cannons on the XP-50 do have a 20 mil advantage in terms of effective firing range, but eh, that's, that doesn't really <laughs> make up for the fact that there are only two of them on the XP-50 and there are four on the Mosquito. Uh, likewise, the Mosquito has four uh, Browning machine guns, and uh, now they don't do as much damage as the machine guns on the XP-50. The XP-50 does 45 damage per second versus the 25 damage per second on the Mosquito. Uh, the XP-50 machine guns also have a higher rate of fire of 750 versus the 600 on the Mosquito uh, and have a longer effective firing range. But again, only two of them on the XP-50 and four on the Mosquito. So that is why the Mosquito is indicated as being superior in terms of armaments. The non-premium version of the Mosquito is basically the same. So, same issue. Moving on to bombs and rockets, uh, the XP-50 is indicated as being significantly inferior in terms of bombs and rockets to the Mosquito aircraft. I can tell you that the uh, bomb on the XP-50 is very underwhelming. Uh, there are, are two of them, and uh, they only do 1,500 damage within a 50 meter radius. So if you take, if we take a look at the uh, Mosquito, uh, it has two 500 pound bombs that do 4,300 damage in a 75 meter radius versus again, just the 1,500 within a 50 meter radius on the XP-50. Uh, also, the Mosquito has eight uh, rockets that do a thousand damage a piece within a 35 meter radius. So, and then on the non-premium version, uh, basically the same layout. So clearly the uh, Mosquito is a superior aircraft in terms of bombs and rockets. In terms of survivability, 
Uh, the Mosquito aircraft are indicated as being superior to the XP-50 and that's because they have uh, greater hit points. Uh, top speed at best altitude, so when these aircraft are at their optimum altitude, uh, the XP-50 outperforms the Mosquito aircraft by uh, 40 kilometers per hour on the premium as compared to the premium and 20 kilometers per hour as compared to the non-premium Mosquito. Maximum dive speed, again, uh, the XP-50 uh, has greater airspeed. Average time to turn 360 degrees. Uh, this is where the XP-50 has an advantage over the Mosquitoes. Mosquito premium version uh, turns a uh, second 1.4 seconds slower than the XP-50. The non-premium uh, basically one second slower than the XP-50. So uh, that can definitely be an advantage if these aircraft are you know facing off in close proximity to one another and, and get into a turning situation. The XP-50 is going to outperform the Mosquitoes. Optimum airspeed. Again, the XP-50 has the advantage there. Optimum altitude, uh, and now this is a big advantage over the mosquitoes. Um, the XP-50 uh, is at 2,000 meters, whereas the mosquitoes are only at 1,600 uh, meters. In addition, the XP-50 can outclimb uh, the mosquitoes, the premium uh, to a greater degree than the non-premium. So I would say that, you know, looking at these three aircraft, um, the Mosquitoes have the armament and uh, bombs and rockets, the ordnance advantage, whereas the XP-50 has the speed advantages. Okay, and now we have up the Lockheed P-38J Lightning and the Messerschmitt ME-410. Looking at gun armaments, uh, there seems to be a consistent theme here. The Lightning uh, and the ME-410 both are indicated as having superior armaments to the XP-50. Uh, taking a look at that more in depth here. The Lightning has four machine guns that do greater damage per second, have a higher rate of fire, and a higher effective firing range than the two machine guns that are on the XP-50. Um, the XP-50 is at 45 damage per second with a 750 rate of fire and effective firing range of 520 meters. So clearly in terms of its machine guns, Lightning has the advantage. Uh, now the XP-50 does have two cannons versus the single cannon of the Lightning. That single cannon, though, does uh, 180 damage per second with a rate of fire of 120 and an effective firing range of 540 meters. Now, the collective damage per second of the two cannons on the XP-50, they're, they're each 90 damage per second, so the, the two of them together add up to 180 damage per second, so that's pretty much the same as the single cannon on the Lightning. I will say though that the uh, rate of fire and the effective firing range for the two cannons on the XP-50 are greater than that on the Lightning. So, But I would guess that the reason why the Lightning has the advantage in armaments is the four machine guns uh, with higher damage than just the two machine guns on the XP-50. Looking at the ME-410, see that it has uh, two machine guns. Uh, they do uh, slightly less damage than the machine guns on the 
XP 50 by 15 damage per second, but they do have a much higher rate of fire. The rate of fire on the XP 50 is only 750 versus the 1200 rate of fire on the ME 410. Uh, and that can be significant if we're talking about fire damage, the, the propensity of fire damage. And the machine guns on the uh, ME 410 also have a less of a effective firing range, 400 meters versus the XB 50s 520. But in terms of ar armaments, the what makes the ME 410 stronger are that it has three cannons versus just the two cannons of the XP 50. The 220 millimeter cannons that it has basically do the same, have the basic same stats as those of the XP 50 with maybe just a slightly longer effective firing range. But then you add into that that it has uh, two 30 millimeter uh, cannons that do 180 damage per second, so twice the damage per second of the 20 millimeter cannons on the XP 50. So that's why the ME 410 is indicated as being superior in terms of armaments. All right, so uh, going on to bombs and rockets, the lightning is indicated as being superior to the XP 50. The ME 410 is also indicated as being superior to the XP 50, although it's a little symbol there is in red. I don't know why that's a little glitch, but but it is indicated as being uh, superior. Uh, taking a look at that more specifically, the Lightning has two 500 pound bombs that do significantly more damage than the two bombs uh, on the XP 50. XP 50's bombs only 1500 damage in a 50 meter radius versus the 4300 in a 75 meter radius uh, of the Lightning. Also, the Lightning has uh, 10 rockets that do 1,000 damage apiece in a 30 meter radius. So clearly the, the Lightning is superior in terms of ordnance. So looking at the ME410, in terms of bombs and rockets, it has four rockets, and those rockets do 1,800 damage a piece in a 55 meter radius versus just the 1500 damage on the bombs equipped by the XP-50. The ME-410 can be equipped with bombs, but then you would lose the 30 millimeter cannons. Taking a look at survivability, the Lightning and the ME-410 are indicated as being more survivable than the uh, XP 50 because they have higher hit points. Uh, top speed at best altitude, uh, consistent with what we saw with the Mosquitoes, the XP 50 is just a faster aircraft. In terms of average time to turn 360 degrees, uh, the Lightning and the XP 50 are the same in that regard, whereas the XP 50 can outturn the ME 410 by 2.5 seconds. So if you're an XP 50 and you're going up against an ME 410, uh, snuggle in there closely and get into a turning dogfight, you're going to win that. Stall speed, the Lightning and the ME 410 will stall prior to the XP 50 stalling. Optimum altitude, the Lightning has a 200 meter advantage there. Uh, the ME 410 is the same. Rate of climb, the XP 50 uh, significantly outclimbs both the Lightning and the ME 410. Okay, so I hope that helps put the XP 50 in context with its tier 6 peers. So, having reviewed my build for the XP 50, uh, as well as the aircraft specifications, and having compared it to other tier 6 heavy fighters, let's head into a battle now and see how it actually performs.
All right, pilots, so we are going to be fighting over the Plateau Weapon of Revenge map. And we will be headed over to the airfield first, and then most likely to the military base. Got a 25 second engine boost. Help us get there. We'll drop our ordnance, but I have to say that so far um, the ordnance has been pretty unimpressive. We'll try to take out this. Um, Airfield here. Drop both bombs on it. You can see it pretty much did nothing. Kind of a waste of time. What I'm doing right now is just getting some distance here because I found that those um, air defense aircraft can really take a bite out of you. Take out this heavy fighter. Okay, we'll head over to the military base. Start working things up here. This bomber. We're holding our engine cooling and reserve here. I believe these bombers are headed to our airfield, so... Fighter down here. Take it out. We are losing the military base. There are too many enemy aircraft. We'll try to help out our friendly here. There we go. Some good teamwork going on there. Bomber coming in. Seriously. Man. <sighs> go, go for the other end. Fighter. A rocket has reached the target. Enemy object damaged. 
multi roll over here. Should be pretty easy to take down. So it dodges us. Uh, some ground attack aircraft here. Let's drop a bomb up here. Thought we might be able to damage it with a bomb. This guy doesn't drop a bomb. If he does, we're dead. We took our chances there. Yeah. Got a tech aircraft or That bomb on him now. Receiving reports about rapidly deteriorating weather conditions. Support will be unable to reach you. Do you read me? Over. We've lost the military base. Regain the ground. Okay. Bombers up here. We'll boost up there and see if we can take them out. Take the rear one first. do here is we do have a multi-roll on our tail. Ah, goodness. Well, we definitely did what we could there, folks. Looks like we're prevailing right now, so really that'll keep up. So I think looking back at that engagement, the two bombers, probably would have been wise to take out the multi-roll first, and then swing back around and grab the bombers. The bombers weren't really a threat to us, whereas the multi-roll was. So I think that's the lesson of that. Engagement. The enemy is launching rocket strikes on our complex. Try to neutralize the enemy military base. Get a box. to winning here. 
just hold on. Ooh. They've got uh, all the sectors except for one. So almost got him. Swing back around here and take him out. The Good job. Enemy force is attacking the military base. Proceed with caution. Victory is ours. We're waiting for your return. Whew. <laughs> that was close. That was very close, folks. But pulled it out. All right, uh, number one spot on the team there. Uh, subjugator. Effective fire. Head back here to the hangar and take a look at the after action report. All right, so uh, over 3,000 in damaged aerial targets, 2,900 plus to ground targets. I have to say that the performance of the bombs uh, on this aircraft have been extremely underwhelming. Uh, they are practically useless. Um, eight uh, aerial targets destroyed, two sectors captured, and uh, over 9,000 in combat points. So, uh, good match there, pulled out the victory. Good job, Boggs. Anyway, um, I really hope that you've enjoyed this video. I think this is a fine aircraft. I really enjoy flying it. Looks really cool as well. And I think that uh, if you get an opportunity to fly the XP-50, that you'll have a lot of success and fun.